If you're looking for ways to achieve more work-life balance, for real, then this video is for you. What's up Believe Nation, it's Evan. My one word is believe and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I wanna see explode out onto the world. Now I often get asked by entrepreneurs, how do I have work-life balance? My business takes up so much of my time. I don't know how to balance everything and make it all work together. And so today I'm gonna to share with you my seven ways on how to achieve work-life balance for real. Nine, eight. All right, so way number one is define it for yourself. Work-life balance is a really personal thing. I remember looking at The Rock and his schedule and he likes to wake up three to four hours before he has to get on set for making a movie so he can work out. So he loves working out for a couple hours before he gets on set. And to him, that's balance. He says, that's how I keep my life in balance. And to me, looking at that, I think he's crazy. I can't imagine waking up three to four hours earlier than I need to to show up for a meeting, to show up for filming day like this, just to work out for a couple hours. You know, I did 25 push-ups before coming here instead of doing my usual half an hour on the bike because I was crunched on time. And so just, that's balance to him, but to me it sounds crazy, and that's okay. The goal isn't for you to judge somebody else's version of balance, it's for you to figure out what balance looks like for you. And so you might look to me, you might look to The Rock, you might look to all these other people that I'm profiling and see what they do. And that's just to try on the hat, try on the vest, try on, try on the jacket, right? Like you try it on and you see, does that work for you? And if it doesn't serve you, then get rid of it. And the ones that do, then you keep it. So it might mean you wake up super early, it might mean you have X amount of time with your family, X amount of time with your, your business, it might mean you're chunking your time. There's a lot of different strategies. And if you don't know what to do, then you try them all and then you pay attention. Does this work for you? Just because it works for The Rock, it doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. Just because it works for me, doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. And so by pulling out these different pieces, it's figuring out what balance means to you. And until you define that for yourself, none of the strategies will work. You have to know what that looks like for you, and then you can plan around it. All right, way number two is, now we need to make a realistic plan. And I think in general, we tend not to make plans that we can actually keep to and that are realistic. We try to plan for our ideal day, which is great. It's a fantastic exercise to think, what does an ideal day look like for me? How would I love to wake up and spend my day every day? That exercise is awesome to do. But don't expect that to happen, and at least not immediately. You have to be able to make it realistic because what ends up happening is if you say, I wanna wake up and I wanna, I wanna work out and I wanna meditate for 30 minutes and I want to watch a video and then read a book and my perfect morning routine is like three hours to get me ready. Maybe one day you wake up and you don't have those three hours. Maybe something crazy happened to you at night that keeps you up late and then you can't wake up that early in the morning and then you're sleeping in and then you feel defeated. This is a big challenge of creating an unrealistic plan is that when you can't achieve it, then you get down on yourself and you feel bad, you lose self-confidence. And so being able to make a plan that you can stick to, a plan that you factored in your life and how it is working right now and you're making it to build a better life. So this is where you are now, this is where you wanna to get to and your habits and your routine, your schedule will guide you this way. Making sure that what you can do right now is realistic is super, 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 super important. Way number three is involve the important people in your life. So if you are single and have no responsibilities and nobody else to plan your life with, then it makes it a lot easier. But if you're not, if you have a team, you have to be responsible to them. If you have a husband or wife or boyfriend, girlfriend or parents who need you or kids who need you, then you are not making your plan in a vacuum. You've got to involve them. And so as an example, one of the things I did when I was taking over Toronto Dance Salsa, this business, was I sat down with my wife, Nina, and I said, I need to figure out a plan that works for both of us because this business is mostly a nighttime business. This isn't a nine to five kind of business. People aren't coming at three o'clock in the afternoon to take a dance class, right? People come after work to take a dance class. And so we are busy every night of the week and then on Saturdays and Sundays during the week. And so for me to meet with my instructors and visit classes and give feedback and help build the business, some of that would happen during the day and Monday is my TDS day, but a lot of that would have to happen at night. And we have parties and socials and events. We have events three times a week. We have classes every night of the week. And so my concern was spending so much time at TDS for the evenings and not having enough time for Nina and my son. And so we sat down and made a plan. 
and said, okay, the maximum I'm going to be out is three nights a week. The maximum I'm going to be out doing TDS stuff is three nights a week. And then I was able to plan with my assistant to say, okay, Sandra, the maximum I'm going to be out is three nights a week. What I need to do is have one night a week visiting somebody's class, one night a week going to one of our events and parties, and one night a week mentoring and training with somebody on my team. And then she makes it all work. She's fantastic, Sandra, thank you, you saved my life. And so when I figured that out with my wife, this is the balance that we can handle in our relationship. Right now, maybe that changes, maybe more time frees up, or maybe we need more time together, and then that might make an adjustment. But not making your plans in a vacuum and involving the people around you who also need your time and getting them involved in the plan, like getting their buy-in on the plan is super important. When Nina said, okay, three nights a week is something we can deal with and that's doable, that's manageable, that's what I like, then I can plan around that and we're both on board and creates for much, much more harmonious marriage and life. Way number four is schedule your time. If you wanna have good work-life balance, you need to set yourself up for success. So for me, I found having a schedule that I could follow on a daily basis has really, really helped me create a life that is both productive and really fulfilling. It wasn't always the case for me though. There was a time before I had a schedule, I would just work all the time. I felt like I was always busy, but I never got anything important done. And in addition to that, I wasn't taking care of myself and health wise or my spiritually, and I didn't have time for my friends or family. And I felt a little bit resentful at times. I felt like I didn't have a good work-life balance until I made the decision that I'm gonna take the responsibility and creating a life around what I care about. And it was really simple. All I had to do was just to create a schedule for myself. So here's what you need to do to create a schedule for yourself. Think about the three most important aspects of your life. So for example, your work, your relationships, and yourself. And this is also a really good time to kind of get real and be honest with yourself. Really, are the priorities under each category actually priorities? Are they actually that important? So you wanna put things on there that are absolutely important and a priority for you. And once you have done that and you feel good about it, it's time for you to transfer that over to a calendar. Now, I use Google Calendar. You could use whatever calendar that you want as long as it's easy to use and it's easy to access because you're gonna be needing to do that every single day. So here's a fun part. You get to put all those priorities and put it on to your calendar and schedule it in around your life. But the important part is you need to make sure that you actually follow each different time slot as if it was an appointment that you cannot cancel. And you need to stick to it every single day. And yeah, of course, you could change it on a monthly basis or every quarter, but it's important to stick to it for it to work. And I promise you, if you follow this every single day for the next 30 days, you're going to see a massive difference both in your work and life. Way number five is check the box. I'm a big fan of momentum, and sometimes you're not able to follow your schedule and your routine exactly to the T. Some Sometimes you have crazy things that come up. Maybe you have this really late night party that you have to go to, or maybe you're celebrating somebody's birthday, or maybe something falls apart in your business that you need to handle. You know, not every day is gonna be perfect and you will have days where it's really hard to keep your schedule. I'm a big fan of momentum and I try to at least check the box if I'm not able to do the whole thing. So what do I mean by that? I look at today. Once a month, I come into TDS, I have my cameraman, Jason, he sets it up, everything looks beautiful. And this is a once a month thing that we do. And I've got to be here early in the morning and we film pretty much for the entire day. It's something I do once a month and try to make quality videos for you guys. When I do that, on that one day a month, I'm not able to stick to my usual morning routine. I can't, as an example, go and do my workout on the bike. I like to spend my mornings, 30 minutes every day on the bike, answering your questions on social media. That's the time when I check my social media. It's a lot of fun, it brings me a lot of joy. I'm not willing to wake up earlier like The Rock because then I don't have as much energy to bring to you guys on camera. But I still wanna be able to check the box of saying that I worked out. I don't wanna lose the momentum of not working out. And so I'll find a small way to do it. And so for me, it was 25 push-ups in the morning. If I can't do 30 minutes on the bike, I do 25 push-ups in the morning, or as many as I can do. It started off as like 15, then 20, now I'm about 25 before I get too tired. And that takes 30 seconds to do. I can always find time to fit 25 push-ups in, but I can't necessarily always find time to fit 30 minutes in. 
Another quick example is I'm trying Wim Hof's breathing method. It's really helped me this year. I, I've gotten sick once all year long, which for me is amazing because I used to always get sick. And I credit part of that to Wim Hof and using his breathing technique. Part of what that is, is doing three sets of 30 deep breaths and then holding your lungs with no air in them for as long as you can. And that takes some time to do every morning. So if I'm really rushed, like a day like today, I'll do one set. Instead of doing all three, I'll do one. Is it as good as three? No. But at least can check the box to say, I did that exercise. If you can't do it on a consistent basis, the whole thing, you're doing a little micro part of it so you can check the box. Now, if that's happening every day, if every day you're only doing 25 push-ups instead of doing the full 30 minutes on the bike or, or that equivalent for you, then you need to go back to one of the previous points around setting a realistic plan because you don't want to fall short consistently. But just expect things to happen in your life that there are some days you just can't stick with it, but you still want to find some way to check the box to keep the momentum going. Way number six is reevaluate if you're off consistently. So back to my last point, if you're finding that you are not consistently doing things, that's where it's useful to have a, a habit tracker or some checklist or something that you're doing to be able to track the habits and the routine that you want for yourself, to track what a balanced life looks like and so you know what things you're not doing consistently, then you have to ask yourself, is that a realistic goal? Is that something that is still important to you? And if it is, how do I carve out more time in my schedule to make that happen? Either it's not an important goal for you, or it is and you just don't have the spot in the calendar. You haven't etched out time for it to happen. So, example, if you have date night planned and every Tuesday night is date night for you, and you're only hitting it once a month instead of four times a month or five times a month sometimes, then what's the problem? Either date night is not important enough to you and should be eliminated, or you're allowing other things to encroach on your Tuesday night that date night doesn't happen. Sometimes things will get crazy and you will need to do something else on that Tuesday night and that has to be okay. But if you're missing four out of every five, three out of every four, that's a problem and you need to adjust your schedule. So it's a constant battle of reevaluating your schedule and also newsflash, back to point number one, what you see as work-life balance will change over time. It's not like you have this perfect vision of work-life balance and that's gonna be set for the rest of your life. It will change. It may change from week to week, it might change from month to month, quarter to quarter, year to year, but guaranteed it's not gonna stay the same. The person you are now and what you see as work-life balance right now will not be the same in two years. And so you need to be constantly reevaluating: am I happy? Is my life in balance? Am I working enough? Am I spending enough time with my family? Am I spending enough time personally doing other things? Again, no judgment over what that mix is, but are you happy? And if not, then again, going through all the steps, reevaluating your schedule and making a plan that works for you. And way number seven is to reward your discipline. Sometimes it can be really hard to build new habits, especially if it's something that you want to do or you know is good for you, but there's all these temptations not to do it. So for me, an example, working out, being on the bike, I know that it's important. I know that it's part of a healthy lifestyle. I don't know that I feel the benefit every day of going on the bike. And so I reward my discipline by tying it to something else that I really like. So for example, I use the social media. When I'm on the bike every morning, and I do this on the weekends, I'm responding to your social media. I'm responding to your tweets and to your snaps and to your Instagrams. And that's my time, that 30 minutes every morning to be able to reply to you guys. And if I miss the bike, like I did today, I don't reply on social media. I'm not getting back to you guys. And it's not the pressure of like, I feel like I need to get back to you, I enjoy it. So I'm, I'm missing out on this activity that I enjoy doing because I didn't do the habit that I'm trying to build. And so by linking some of those things together, by rewarding the discipline of doing the habit that you want to try to maintain, I find that it really helps me. And so that can be a challenge sometimes finding what is the thing that you really want to do and you know it's good for you, but there's, there's resistance somehow and how do I link it with something positive that I can do maybe at the same time so that I get a better result and I'm more likely to stick with that habit. So those are my seven ways on how to achieve work-life balance for real. I made this video because Perla Girl asked me to. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, check out the link in the description. You can go and cast your vote. I'd also love to know which rule was your favorite? Which rule is most applicable to your situation right now? Did I miss an eight, nine, 10 that you wanna to add to the list? Have your say, leave it down in the comments below and I look forward to seeing what you write. I also want to give a quick shout out to Dave Gardner from thedavidgardner.com. Thank you so much, man, for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and doing the review on your website and showing off that awesome picture. I really appreciate the support, man, and I'm so glad that you enjoyed the book. 
So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. Raise your standard. Apple at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. I don't ever give up. I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to see my all-time favorite top 10 rules of success, I have a very special secret video for you. These are the individual clips that I have personally learned the most from and applied to my life and my business. Check the link in the description for details.